Here's a funny piece of trivia for you. A team from the American League Central is actually going to make the playoffs. We have Brandon Warren from Locked On Minnesota Twins to ask the question, if one has to be in there, why not the Twins? You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, Locked On Twins crossover. This is a podcast where we talk about all of Major League Baseball, or we talk about the Twins, whichever feed you're listening to. I am the host of Locked On MLB. My name is Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I am an Emmy nominated television producer who has been a baseball podcaster for the last decade or so, and I've been here at the Locked On Podcast Network for the last five seasons. Follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm your pal Simon Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. My guest today is Mr. Brandon Warren. I didn't know if I was supposed to jump in there. All right, there you go. Yeah, how's it going? Good. Tell where who are you? Why would tell, tell introduce yourself to the well, every time I have a show, I say you can follow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore Warren, but I probably wouldn't. So uh, it's uh, probably good advice, but I am the host of Locked On Twins, the two-time, two-time, two-time host with the Nash Walker cream filling in the middle. So I <laughs> am more than happy to be back, and I'm having a great time, even though the Twins are the definition of mediocre right now. Well, look it. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. the the. Oh, by the way, um, I got to bring this up right away because I sometimes I forget to do it. I had a trivia question on, and we went a couple of days between people getting it right. And so I kept posting it back up, posting it back up. The trivia question was, there are five pitchers in the history of baseball to hit, throw a no-hitter in both the American League and the National League. Four of them are in the Hall of Fame. One is not. And I held that out there for a couple of days. And finally, we got a bunch of people getting it right. Uh, Sports Rewind Digital at Sports Rewind NFT got it right. Um, let me see who else got it right. There was, uh, of course, Craig and Amy, my absolute uh, you know, stalwarts in the trivia contest. They got that right. And I think what on the part may have been my good friend, uh, uh, Chris Austin who's been a follower since the Sully Baseball days. He's at Christopher AAU2. They all got to correct the answer. It's Hideo Nomo. Mm. Hideo Nomo threw a no-hitter as a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers in Coors Field, no less. And then in his first ever start with the Red Sox in 2001, he threw a no-hitter at uh, Camden Yards. Uh, by the way, uh, I guess there's a little caveat needs to be thrown on there, but Sports Rewind Digital pointed out, I said that, the fifth one is not in the Hall of Fame. Actually, Hideo Nomo is in the Japanese Hall of Fame. So I guess they're all Hall of Famers in one way, shape, or another. And so uh, there you go. That's the answer to the trivia question there. You get your shout-outs. And let's let's give a quick tip of our hat to Hideo Nomo because let's remember he was the one. Yes, Ichiro became the, the great superstar coming from Japan. But it was Hideo Nomo and the sensation that he brought in the post-strike uh, aftermath, I guess, of 1995, the excitement of Nomo Mania wasn't quite Fernando Mania, but he brought in a brand new audience to uh, Dodger Stadium, and there was it was they were going crazy for Japanese fans, and there was they were showing the games live. Remember in '95? I don't know if you're old enough to remember. But in '95, yes. they were showing the games live uh, uh, of Nomo doing his tornado thing. And it was it was fabulous, and it was one of the things that helped restart the game, but also really connected Japan baseball with Major League Baseball, and started uh, this wonderful flood of talent, which brings us to Shohei Otani, who will be acquired by the Minnesota Twins shortly. Right? <laughs> we'll see about that. But that yeah, Nomo was part of a five year run for Dodgers winning the Rookie of the Year, which, no matter how you slice it, is pretty insane if you ask me. I'll tell you what's even more insane. They put together that – it really looked like they were putting together the next great Dodger team. 
It right. really did. When you looked at, there was the great Dodger teams, obviously the 60s that were led by uh, Koufax and Drysdale. Then you had a resurgence in the 70s where they didn't win it all, but they got to three World Series in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the Don Sutton. They had the amazing infield of Garvey, Lopes, Russell, and Say. They also had Reggie Smith, you know, Dusty Baker, uh, you know, Bert Hooten, Charlie Huff. And then, of course, they were the only team to win two World Series titles in the 80s with the remnants of the great 70s teams finally winning in the short, you know, in the strike season. And then the strangest World Series champion of all time. Well, second strangest, because the strangest might be the 87 Twins. You had back-to-back <laughs> year where you had surreal World Series champions. Right. And then it looked like they were building the great new franchise. You had the superstar Piazza at the center of it. You had the great bats around them with uh, Raul Mondesi and Eric Karros and Todd Hollinsworth. And you had the ace in Hideo Nomo. And it really looked like the Dodgers were putting together the next great Dodger team. And then Fox took over the team and blew it up. They had a baby Adrian Beltre at that time, too, if I'm not mistaken, because he started in the late 90s. So, I mean, everything was lining up. And then, you know, they're... They're basically Yankees West, at least now they are in terms of spending money. Although maybe calling the Yankees the spenders now is a bit much, but they were they were the spenders out west, or at least they were primed to be. So I can't believe that they didn't do better than that. Well, they 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 did a couple of horrific things. First of all, they got in the feud with Piazza, who should have been the greatest Dodger of all time. Should have been mm-hmm. the greatest offensive player in Dodger history. He had the great backstory that he was Lasorda's godson, that they drafted him as a favor. They got a Hall of Famer for their Trolls. Right. They clashed on a contract and they traded him away to Florida, who then traded him to the Mets. And more people think of him as a Met than as a Dodger. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, remember, they traded away Pedro Martinez. Yep. You could have had Pedro in his prime, Piazza in his prime, and the emergence of Adrian Beltre. And instead, we got the, you got a very weird sort of Gary Sheffield, Steve Finley, Greg Gagne, or Eric Gagne, sorry. Uh, years until finally, then you got the McCourt years and the catastrophe that they were, um, mm-hmm. and yet Manny Wood. I mean, it's, it became this weird wandering in the woods period for Dodgerville. But hey, hey, but that's uh, that's Nomo. Yep. And if you're if you're if you don't remember Nomo, man, it was a lot of fun. It really was a lot of fun. It was it was hard not to get affected by it. It was Lasorda's last dance with the team. We but used that- to we used to mock his uh, not mock, but like try to repeat his delivery. And mimic. Mimic. Yeah, mimic because you could you could explain it to people who've never seen it and you'd still not quite get it right. Yeah, well, look at we're here to talk a little bit about the AL Central in the first segment. We're just you know as we're recording this right now, we're I, I'm in my classroom by the way. If you can't tell, uh, um, I'm in my classroom here talking about you know the the Guardians managed to leapfrog the uh minnesota twins on the final couple of days of the of the first half uh only half a game separate the two minnesota and cleveland you know w- one game in the loss column separates cleveland from minnesota you know if you had said at the beginning of the year the twins would go into the all-star break sub 500 you'd probably be throwing your hands in the air saying we got to blow the team up instead you're like we are one day away from being first place by ourselves Mm-hmm. And so, without talking about the Twins, just talk about the rest of the division. What the hell is going on here? How do you get to the – I don't care how bad a division is. How do you get to this point of the year and nobody has their nose above water? You know, almost, how did this happen? Well, and I don't know if you remember this, but the 1994 AL West was the oh, yeah. wild, wild West, but in opposite – I think in, in opposite form. I think the winning – division granted they didn't have the playoffs was like six games under 500 so right. i don't know that the division is careening toward that but the fact that there are only two contenders when i think everyone kind of expected the white Sox to be in there and i think even too there was some optimism around where detroit would be in their rebuild or even kansas city um but neither of those teams look to be factors uh as far as the top of the division just kind of jockeying back and forth I think the Twins have been within two or three games of 500 for like the last two months, it feels yeah. like. Um, it's just wholly unsatisfying baseball. They're playing just dreadful on offense, uh, big spots. They're striking out, hitting into double plays. I think Carlos Correa leads the planet in double plays. And Cleveland yeah. has just battled injuries. I mean, Tristan McKenzie's been on the shelf. 
There's talk about if they'll trade Bieber. There's uh, their offense is got well, barren patches pretty much. Quantrill, Quantrill's hurt. You yep. know, they, they want to, you know, yep. you, I mean, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but just no. think about the thing you just said that they're the pitcher, the one pitcher they have who has thrown over a hundred innings, a yep. pitcher who's having a, he was having a fine year, not a, not his top year, but you know, Bieber's having a fine year. He's 19 starts, uh, a 3.77 ERA, you know, a good strikeout to walk ratio. Um, out for a team that's in first place by themselves at the all-star break. And there's open discussion of whether or not they're going to trade their best pitcher. That's a weird division. Well, that's not only weird. that, but the twins are listed at 70% to win the division on baseball reference and the guards are 27.8. So honestly, nobody's buying this guardians team right now. And I think part of it is twins have the easiest schedule remaining guardians mm-hmm. have one of the toughest, well, not one of the toughest, but, Middle of the pack, which compared to the rest of the division is one of the toughest. When you also, th- well, the thing that I think is fascinating, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit in tomorrow's show, where I'm going to be going through um, what the Cardinals and the National League Central should be doing. But because it's suddenly a buyer's market, if you have trade chips, there are so many teams who think they're still in it that you could probably get more than you normally would. So if you have a Lucas Giolito or you have mm-hmm. a Dylan Cease, or hell, if you even have a um, Lance Lynn who pitched very, very well his last start, Mm -hmm. you're going to get a better young player than you normally would because you know Los Angeles, the Dodgers, not the Angels, but you know the Dodgers are going to be in it to bring in a starting pitcher. You know the Astros are going to be bringing to be a starting pitcher. Every team will want to have that, and and if you play them off each other, you could get a a potential blue chipper for your troubles. But it's also so mind-boggling that in a division where being 500 you're at the top and you have that many quality major leaguers to deal that you wouldn't say well wait a minute why can't we finish above 500 we have enough major leaguers don't we but they don't and that's why this division is so weird yeah and the white Sox have been content to have one player at every position and no depth beyond that and it's bit them so hard over and over and over again and so it's Again, the division is going to come down to the top two. I still like the Twins' chances, but they have played some of the most boring and bad baseball you can imagine, a team that's been in first place all season long. Like It's just been ugly. Well, we're going to get into that in segment two to talk about the Minnesota Twins who could potentially play a uninspiring brand of baseball all the way to October. And will they be a sleeper for October? Is that a hint of what our sponsor is? Hey, this episode is indeed brought to you by Sleeper. Now, what is Sleeper? How is Sleeper? Now, let me tell you something. We are about to start the second half of the season. And we're talking about these about the American League Central. And who knows where that's going to go? Who knows what players are going to get big hits? Who knows what players are going to turn around? Will Jose Ramirez get a big slugging home run in the middle there? Will Tim Anderson wake up? All I know is that I can make my picks right here on Sleeper, predicting who's going to have the big hit or not. It's a fantasy game of chance where you can win up to 100 times your money. Sleeper is now offering a 100-time payout for up to eight picks. You can choose as many as eight players that you like. Pick more or less with your favorite baseball stats like homers, strikeouts, stolen bases. Get your picks right. You can win big. I got right here on my phone right here. You see that? And who I got? I got Shoei Otani. I got uh, Wander Franco coming up we have different people julio urias jonathan india i think jonathan india of the cincinnati reds i'm gonna pick him to get two hits this next game and boom we're gonna see what happens now you get safe and fast withdrawals and when jonathan india gets his two hits pal sully's sitting pretty so use promo code locked on you'll get a 100 dollars match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply and hey See Sleeper's terms of use for details. And it's currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. I just scratched my chin, picked Jonathan Indy to do well. And we're here with Brandon Warren 
of Locked On Twins. And if you're here with Brandon Warren, you're here with your pal Sully from Locked On MLB, depending how you're crossing over on this. The day before Bastille Day. Watch your head if you're in France. Okay, speaking of watch your head, the Minnesota Twins, as we said, are only half a game out of first place. They have played one of the most uninspiring, dull brands of baseball that have thrilled the Minnesota fans into saying we're one game under 500, but still in a hunt to win their first pennant since 1991. All right, what should they do? Should they go for it? What the heck, what the heck is going on? Yeah, they should go for it because the issues that they need to address at the deadline can be filled mostly without going crazy. They need a little bit of help on the front end of the bullpen, mostly due to injuries. And so a lot of times you can go get those guys fairly reasonably. It's the back end guys that cost more. And I think it's fascinating too, to see how prices get dictated at this time of year. But the one guy I keep coming back to is Michael Fulmer twins traded for him last year at the deadline. And he didn't cost very much. Uh, He's had a tough year, but he's on a team that's, I mean, the Cubs aren't really contending. And so he's been better of late. I think they need to find a couple, you know, diamonds in the rough like that. Beyond that, they just need guys to hit. They've got the personnel. The guys are just not doing it. And if it comes down to the deadline and guys still aren't performing, that's when they're going to dip down for guys like Matt Walner, Trevor Larnick in the minors. And so they've got a lot to sort out here in the next two weeks before they decide. They're going to they're gonna be in the marketplace to buy. They're not going to be selling. I, I have no qualms about that. However, they're going to have to get creative on what they do. You know, it's interesting that the in the All-Star game that was just played, what, two days ago, right. uh, you saw Luis Arise and Pablo Lopez perform well. They both they both did well in the All-Star game, and they're both legit All-Stars. And I don't think – I think this is the example of a trade that helped both teams. The mm-hmm. Twins really needed a, a a reliable pitcher. You know, not, not talking Cy Young award. You know, when his turn comes up, you know, it starts saying, oh, boy, I, this might as well be a bullpen game. And the Marlins desperately needed, in the middle of that lineup, a professional hitter. It didn't matter if it was – the. the People say, what position does he play? Doesn't His position is professional hitter. That's what that lineup desperately needed. And you've seen what it's done to Miami. The just the, I think the big turnaround is it's affected. It's, it's it, the, the concentric circles by having that solid of hitter in the middle of that lineup has affected players, you know, both on the left and the right of him on, on in the lineup, top and bottom. Lopez yeah, think- is obvi- and Lopez has obviously been a, a good yeah. pickup, but – you're seeing that yes, they needed Lopez, and and that and he has been a big, big boost to their rotation. But you're also seeing the effects of not having that professional hitter in the middle of the lineup. This is why you know it. it you know there is a little bit of paying Peter, paying Peter to say, steal from Peter. Oh, Peter and Paul, one of them got paid. Right. Um, so anyway, that's that's I think kind of the unintentional remnants of the Lopez and Arise trade. Yeah, I think Arise, the the fit in Minnesota was weird because defensively he wasn't going to play at second with Jorge Polanco, who's been hurt. So, I mean, again, right. it's, you know, um, but he's just a, not a prototypical first baseman offense production-wise. And in the second half last year, he hit like 289, 290, but had no power, not great on base skills, and showed that the path to him being a replacement-level player is not hard to see if he hits, you know, again, 290, which is perfectly reasonable for any other hitter. For him, it's obviously uh, underperformance. So Twins needed a pitcher. I'm surprised they got more than Pablo Lopez in that trade. A couple of prospects, one a lottery ticket, one kind of an upper mid guy. Uh, Still, I think, win-win trade for both sides. Right. Yeah, and I think the way that it affected it. But they do need that, they do need that, uh, you know, that professional hitter. I think there's a Mm -hmm. couple of teams that need, just some, you know, I've been saying the Yankees with the way, especially with Judge Hurt, mm-hmm. they need someone. It almost doesn't matter what position they play. They need someone who's not an automatic out in that lineup. And I think uh, the Minnesota is kind of in, I don't think Minnesota is in as dire shape. I know they have a worse record than the Yankees, but, you know, the Yankees, when they don't have Aaron Judge, are a sub-500 team. Mm-hmm. Here you take a look at, you know, Polanco is down. You know, they're not getting the season they wanted out of Correa. They're not getting, you know, you know, Solano's been good, but you're not getting much power out of Solano. Right. You know, I mean, you, you know, 
you, you're not getting any production out of Taylor. You're not getting any production out of Kepler. You know, Joey Gallo's, you know, hits homers and that's it. Um, I mean, it's a strange, you're right. Like if you look at this team and, you know, Buxton's not having the year they were hoping he would, I mean, he still has some right. pop, but there's not, mm-hmm. you know, there's, if they, you're right. It's kind of like if you add that one guy who is not an easy out, how will that affect you? Know, it's like, it, it may also affect the players around them too. I mean, I've seen that. We've all seen that happen. You know, not just with Miami. We've seen a team like they they put in that one player and all of a sudden that one player sort of energizes everybody else. Um, and, and, it's, and, and I'll tell you what it is. It's not always the person you think it's going to be. I remember in, I, I, I've used this, this example before, but in 2012, San Francisco got hit with a big mallet to the face after the All-Star break when Melky Cabrera, I'm, 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 the timeline might be a little fuzzy, but Cabrera got suspended after being the uh, the All-Star game MVP. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of what are they going to do, what are they going to do? And it turned out an unheralded trade, or a trade that got maybe a little blip on the radar, was the acquisition of Marco Scudero. And Scudero sparked that team offensively. He won the MVP of the National Championship Series, arguably could have been the MVP of the World Series the way he played, one of being Pablo Sandoval, who was amazing. But mm-hmm. the effect he had, including on Sandoval, including on Pence and some of the other players that were put into the team, you almost like there's always this this sense of looking for the sexy player. You know, like, are we going to, are they going to trade for Otani? No, no. You got to get that one guy who could spark the team. And you, you got to find essentially their Scudero to put into the squad. Of course, Scudero would be perfect because he plays second base. He would have to worry about Polanco. But right. the, this is where the Twins general manager, this is why the front office is going to earn their homework right now, is which player currently floundering on a non-contending team is going to show up to a contender, wake up energized, and spark the rest of the club. And that's, I don't know who that is, but that's, you know, that's who the, the acquisition is going to be. No one knew it was going to be Eddie Rosario and Jorge Soler a couple of years ago with the Atlanta Braves. But look at that. They And, and Jock Peterson. But that's the kind of move they need to make. Yeah, you, that was my reference I was going to go to, my point of reference. Mm-hmm. was going to be the Braves. So, yeah, I wonder if it's not, you know, someone like Trey Mancini on the Cubs or, you know, someone like that where definitely someone you know has had some pop in the past, has been a, a bit, had the ability to to take some good plate appearances. CJ Crone, again, another one maybe in that mix. But um, guys who've just been around the block a bit, you know, Jonathan Scope of the Tigers. Again, who not DF, who was DFA just the other day. They can. Oh, he him. was. I didn't even see yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, he was DFA. They could. They could just pick him up and say, "Hey, you know, dust you off and give you a, I, that." You know what? Look, we just stumbled across. That's what they should do. What's the worst thing that happened? You pick up John, Jonathan Scope, who's and, been a twin before. Who's, yeah, he played for Minnesota before. Has had some good seasons, and say, "Hey, worst case scenario, you stink. Yep. Best case scenario is your pride is hurt, and you want to show everyone you, you know, you want to show everyone." You you don't even need him to be, you know you don't you don't even need him to be your Stremski in 1967. But that was the stretch when he wound up winning the Triple Crown down the stretch. Yes. I know that was before even I was born, but that was growing up. That was always the the benchmark of the great thing. But um, yeah, the, they they need to find their Eddie Rosario, ironically, because he was a twin. They need yeah. to find their Jorge Soler. He wasn't a twin, was he? I can't always no. remember. And uh, or their Jock Peterson, mm-hmm. you know. And maybe the, you know the guy got to pick pick some of the pick some of the prunes. We'll look at um, when we come back. We're going to talk a little bit about well the fact that the Twins had an interesting haul in the draft and some other thoughts as we go on. But first, whoops! Someone oh, hit the wrong. Somebody hit the wrong button. What I meant to do was hit the button to say bird dogs. Yeah, you know, we got to talk about bird dogs. And if you have not heard of them yet, shorts and pants, they're absolutely fabulous. They'll make your uh, backside look way better than you could have ever imagined. They also, too, what's cool about them is you can wear them to church, kicking around the house, playing golf, all that fun stuff. I got mine. 
And let me tell you, Sully, they were a little off on the fit. Sent them back. Could not have been easier to deal with. And so I I like the liners in them. You feel comfortable, but at the same time, not uh, uncomfortable in the sense of like not wearing enough clothes, if you know what I mean. I um, yeah, it's like wearing swimming trunks, but they're more comfortable. But honestly, uh, I could not be happier with them. They're some of the comf most comfortable shorts I own. And I wear shorts all day, every day, even in the middle of winter. So perfect for me. Uh, also, too, free Tumblr. I got my Tumblr. I don't have it handy, but I usually keep it on my desk. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I put my soda in it. It's cold for hours after the fact. And that's just a bonus gift. You get that with your shorts. They're They're wonderful. Um, I've been more than pleased with them. If you want to get in on this, go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB or enter the promo code locked on MLB. You get a free Yeti style tumbler. Maybe next time we have our crossover, I'll have it with me, but that's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB, or just put in the promo code locked on MLB. That's all caps. One word for a free Yeti style tumbler. You will not want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. My humble apologies. So as I have my little uh, board here, I clicked on the button that was supposed to be the bird dog, and my finger slipped, and I hit the intro. But hey, we got a little music bumper right there for me. Yeah, that was actually kind of cool. Hey, um, you are not Lindsey Crosby, no, nope. uh, who is the host of Locked On MLB Prospects. He hosts a terrific show, and this is his Christmas time. This is his. This is his Fourth of July Christmas time his birthday party and Thanksgiving dinner all wrapped up in one. Uh, and I can't pretend to be a draft expert. However, major league baseball.com and their, their always brilliant writer, Jim Callis uh, listed the twins hall in this year's draft to be the third best of any of major league baseballs. And again, it's, it's, it's almost, it's borderline impossible to judge a hall based upon, you know, less than a week since the draft has taken place. Some, you know, sleepers could be big, but the fact that they moved up from the draft lottery from right. the 13th pick to the number five pick, and then they wound up getting Walter Jenkins, who was one of the best available high school talent with all the attention going to LSU. There was very, I don't think any, was any high school pick picked in the top four? I can't remember. Clark. But I, what? Max Clark. Oh, that's right. Clark was. But they got one of the top prospects from any high school town in Walter Jenkins, who is supposedly a, you know, a five tool caliber outfielder. And, you know, they also got uh, another high school uh, pitcher in Charlie Soto. They got a second baseman from Ari uh, Arizona State, uh, Luke Keyshaw, whose name I've never said until just now. And um, they, you know, they picked many picks and some of them were really high up in terms of uh, high ceiling for some of them. And they uh, they apparently had a pretty good draft. And what you're hoping is, is that especially if they're going to trade away, you know, they probably won't trade away any of their top blue chippers, but if they trade right. away some talent, you know that they've, it's always easier to make a deal when you know you've already replenished the, the cupboard. No, exactly. And I had Doug Minkiewicz on Locked on Twins earlier this week, and he's working in some of the amateur scouting type things, team USA type things. And he said Walker Jenkins in other seasons could have gone number one overall, or if he had the hype machine behind him on, on social media, he could have gone higher as well. Granted right. twins happy to scoop him up at five, just like they were happy to scoop up Brooks Lee last year. So sometimes it's just right place, right time. But Minkiewicz was raving about him and his comp. He said he didn't like comps and I understood that, but he said this, this guy reminded him of Larry Walker, and mm -hmm. he's going to be a huh. foundational generational player for the Twins. Hall Beyond of Famer. That, Hall yeah, of Famer right? Larry Walker. That's a pretty good comp. Yeah, and then Keith Law, I believe it was, or maybe it was Kylie McDaniel, said Charlie Soto, if this was 10 years ago, would have been a top 10 pick based on physical attributes. He's 17. He won't turn 18 until the end of August, but he throws the heck out of the ball. Um, I think he's got a good split. After the top picks, though, they uh, they had a lot of guys where it was like the guy would have like a six ERA and a ton of walks. Because if you figure you get a guy throwing blazing fast fastballs, you can't teach velocity as much as you can teach command and control, or at least you can hone that in. So a lot of lottery tickets, but I think that that's why 
Callis was so high on him is, you know, you're, you're, you're taking a stab on a guy who in the 12th round might not look like much, but if you get his sights set on the strike zone, even at an average rate, you've got a big time player. So I like the approach because it is really a wild card. Even after like the second, third round, it's, it's basically, you're just throwing darts. Yeah. But you want to make sure at least on those darts you're throwing at or someone with some, you know, with, with some of that talent and ability that you need. Let me ask you a question about Matt Walner, um, who is going into this year was one of the top twins prospects. Is he hurt? What's going on? Why is he not on the team? Basically just a log jam in the outfield and they don't want to admit any wrongdoing with Max Kepler. And so Walner's absolutely crushing it. He had a, an incredible stretch before the twins sent him out. The main thing is that it's no guarantee he's going to be a savior, but with how bad their offense is, it's, it's time to try something. Exactly. And yeah, but I, I mean, sorry, well, the, sorry. the reason they don't want to give up on Max Kepler is if they give up on Kepler and Walner or Larnick aren't very good, they don't have much recourse beyond that. And they're one Joey Gallo hamstring away from Walner and Kepler being on the same team. So they're trying to maintain this depth at the same time too. Walner has been beating down the door for weeks. Yeah, but this this drives me bananas. This is this absolutely drives me bananas. What did you and I just talk about? I, I sound like I'm reprimanding my son. What it's did okay. you and I just talk about in the second segment? That they need a hitter who is a who is not an out to energize the lineup. They have a player who's hitting the snot out of the ball in triple A, who's part mm -hmm. of the, they all they have to do is call him up. And I just rattled off seven or eight players who are not pulling their weight. You should have what is it? Twenty six players is on a an on an active roster. Your yep. twenty six best healthy players should be on your major league roster. Now, and here's the other thing. Now, just think about this for a second. Right now, half a game separates Minnesota from Cleveland. Okay, it is not outside of the realm of possibility that the American League Central could go down to the wire could go down to that final weekend where a game here or a game there throughout the five, six months of the season could have meant the difference between playing ball in October or golf. Yep. And so every day you don't have your best lineup on your field. You could give a sacrifice a game here or a game there that could add up. And so look at, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I miss the day when Max Kepler became the beloved Harmon Killebrew of this team? Apparently, am I? Did I miss a team where Michael A. Taylor? What, what? This is what his first or second year with the team. First. All right. Oh wow. Only. Put, only. Put a statue next to Kirby Puckett. Right. I don't understand this. You have a guy you desperately need, an outfielder on this team or a, a hitter on this team. I understand that they've thrown a lot of money at Byron Buxton. I understand they've thrown a lot of money at Max Kepler and everything like that. I get it, but. Uh, there's got to be another name you could remove from this roster because sometimes, sometimes, just sometimes, that young homegrown player who could be the very one to spark the club. And it drives me cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, not a sponsor, that not, they're not putting the best product on the field. Not even a homegrown player, but a hometown player. He went to high school north of Minneapolis like – 25 30 minutes he's literally minnesota through and through what the hell are they doing right what the hell they, yeah. gee whiz i wonder if that would i wonder if they could sell some t-shirts that way maybe you know kent herbeck local guy mm -hmm. jack morris local guy paul molitor paul molitor local guy dave winfield was there for an hour and a half i think terry street, steinbach um terry uh didn't dave winfield get a three thousand hit with the yep. twins Off, yeah uh, 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 joe, Mauer, joe Mauer, local yep. guy i wonder mm -hmm. if people like that I wonder oh. if they win the World Series as a local guy. I thought, oh, God, did you try? You know what, Brandon? That's it. I quit. This is the last lockdown MLB. I can't deal with it anymore. I can't <laughs> do it anymore. If All nothing right. else, maybe the last crossover with you and me. All right. Well, there you go. Hey, look at uh, before we get going here, I'm going to ask today's trivia question uh, Who is the only pitcher in Major League history with both 200 wins? and 150 saves. And I'll tell you why I was intrigued by this question. I got it wrong. Ooh. When it was thrown at me, I got it wrong. 200 wins, 150 saves. I thought I knew who it was, but I didn't. Oh, 
I think I know who it is. I think we'll, 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 we'll take it off the air. We'll take it off the air. And by the way, oh, this is not a plug. Just play the Immaculate Grid. I play in it. I'm loving playing it. Mm -hmm. uh, follow And Sully Baseball and Unlocked on MLB Pods. I'll post my results on it. I love getting obscure with it. I love I love digging through the woods. Like I said, a 500 home run hitter who played for the A's, Willie McCovey. Right. Who played half a season with them. You know, who is a person who played for both the Pirates and the Mets? Willie Randolph. You know, let's get, you know, Cubs and Red Sox. Steve Dillard. I love I love <laughs> pulling it off. Uh, I, I pulled Mike McDougal out of my butt the other day. Oh, yeah. He, he I remember him. He threw the heck out of the ball closer with, for the Royals. Yeah, for the Royals. And he also, I yep. needed someone with the Royals and the Rockies. And, and I needed a, a former Rocky and Mariner. And I said, I, oh, no, a former uh, Diamondback and Mariner. Sure, I could go Randy Johnson. I right. went in, I went Andy Bennis. Nice. You know, sometimes you got to pull them out. Yep. Uh, the one I did for a Oakland Athletic and San Diego Padre, I said Alan Embry. Oh, boy. A former Yankee and a former Met, I said Frank Tanana. <laughs> I think he played one more game for the Yankees than I did, but I don't care. Hey, Doesn't it matter. Works. Doesn't matter. But hey, um, so you got your trivia question. You can follow us and 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 post it either here on the YouTube page or locked on MLB pods on Twitter and Instagram or at my personal at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Brandon, where can they find you? At locked on twins at Brandon underscore W A R N E and just Google Locked On Twins. We're available wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, all that fun stuff. All right. Well, talking about a confusing American League Central, wondering if the Twins should go for it and say, oh, yeah, but let's not promote the homegrown hero who could spark the lineup and bring this team into the playoffs. That'd yeah. be just too smart. This has been a Locked On MLB, Locked On Twins crossover for the th uh, 13th day of July 2023. I'm Sully. He's Brandon Ward. Warn. God, why did I call you Brandon Ward? I don't know. I better end the show. <laughs>